Yo, Elliot, I started dating a woman that I thought was a good match for me. She showed interest, and I was beginning to see if we had alignment. A lot was aligned, and then I found out a book she was reading about using pussy power. I'm going to start doing this. Every time I have to curse or curse, I'm going to do a sign of cross. Pussy power. <laughs> it was a short audio book, and I listened to it. Okay, It promoted taking time for men to get to know her before in the intimacy happens, which I like. Mm -hmm. It also promotes multiple dating of men, hmm. rejecting men and then creating friendships first after rejection. Okay. Last weekend, she rejected me after I admitted I acted in a slightly awkward way simply because she was showing affection towards me in one location and then not the next. This caused me to pursue her more and got rejected. I later found out through her friend uh, and a friend of mine, both of them being transparent, that they had started to hang out as friends. Okay. After the rejection, she has since asked me to connect again. Basically, she's following this book's rules as I have listened to it now. Right now, my head is all over the place and I have to keep myself grounded. I like this girl and I don't want to waste time. It's also pretty rare to find someone I align with around common interests and lifestyle choices. I'm aware I'm probably following a red pill approach and I'm not sure if I should tolerate this. I also appreciate she did not know the other guy was a good friend of mine. It seems confusing. Any advice appreciated and thank you for your support as always. So this is what happens and I'm going to share this with you because I'm reading a book written for women about dating. You know why I read books written for women about dating? Because I have daughters and I want the right information to be given to them. I, I don't know, right? But like, I know that they're approaching an age where boys are gonna become a thing. So I read books about girls that are gonna be approaching the age about boys. And I have a good one for you. And I'm gonna tell you what it says because it relates to you guys and where you're having a problem. This is a book I would highly recommend, look, even though it's written for girls, but your girl, she's smart because she's reading books about dating. It's called Pussy Power, so maybe it's, it's got a feminist bent to it. I haven't read the book itself yet, but there are some things that I hear you saying about that book and that what she's doing that I do agree with. And this is a book that I started reading this week, uh, written by Anne, Anna Sophia and Elizabeth Botkin called It's Not That Complicated. How to relate to guys in a healthy, sane, and biblical way. Biblical way. Biblical way. That's the missing part of pussy power. And it's the missing part for you as well. It's a good idea that she takes time to get to know a man before any intimacy happens. In fact, that's what courtship is about. It's about getting to know a person, either you're a woman or a man, but specifically, it's different for men and women, specifically with the intent of marriage. We are vetting each other. We're checking each other out with intent for marriage. The way this works, because in our world, a lot of these things don't work anymore because we're so degenerate. The way this works, number one, from the man's perspective, is that he needs to know what a good marriage looks like. He needs to know what to look for in a good potential wife. And he has to be man enough to approach her father. I know this sounds weird. I'm just putting this out there. You're not legitimately courting a woman until you ask her father's permission. Anybody who's watching this right now and you meet one of my daughters and you're thinking about dating her, you better come to me first. They know that. There's nothing going on with nobody until somebody come and talk to me. Because biblically and traditionally, a young lady is under her father's authority until she's married. That's why women are given in marriage. Men marry, women are given in marriage. So the authority of the father must always be present. I'm saying this to you as a young man that's dating. I'm saying this to those of us who have daughters. And I'm saying this to women. That the fact is... 
that just because you left the house, which is I think is a bad idea, letting your 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 daughter, eighteen year old daughter, go off to go live in some dormitory somewhere, uh, is 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 horrendous in my mind. I'm not sending my daughters out there like that. It's my responsibility to protect my daughter's honor. It's a it's a father's responsibility to protect his daughter's virginity. This is biblical, right? I know the world hates the Bible right now, and I know the world hates Christianity right now, but the correct way to do things is through the authority structure, right? We were talking about authority structure before. The world hates authority structure. And feminists knew that if they removed the father's authority structure from the home, that they would peel the pussies open of all the girls that would no longer respect their dads. That's what feminism wrought. That way, what a young woman does outside of her father, outside of her home, is none of her father's business. But that's not true. That's not true. That's not true in many regards. It's, it's the father's responsibility. So God, on the day of judgment, will ask fathers, why didn't you protect your daughter? Well, look at your daughter. Now she's got all these, all, all these partners that she's been with all these problems as a result, can't settle down to have a husband, can't be fruitful in her marriage, can't submit to a man because she didn't submit to you, you failed. Fathers, it's our responsibility. That's why I read books like this, right? I know what my responsibility is. I don't know what's going to happen, right? Children, kids, even daughters, they're going to do whatever they want to do, right? I, I can't keep an eye on them everywhere, but I damn sure take my responsibility seriously. You out here showing interest in this girl, you started dating her, you guys are a good match. I think it's good that you guys are waiting. I think that's a great idea. What this book makes clear is that it's a good idea to have options for girls and boys. Having options means I'm not committed to you because I'm not courting. You haven't spoken to my father. Until you speak to my father, there's nothing really going on here. I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. And we had better not take it to that next base, to first base, because now we're living in a disordered way. Order, fellas. That's like the big, this is the big catch word for today. Order, order, order. You're living in a disordered way, right? And this book is about charity, which means... The young lady wants what's best for the young man, too. I don't want you to, if a good young woman, if she's a good young woman, she doesn't want you to fall into sin. Bad young women are going to be, they want to manipulate with the pussy power, right? That's why I don't like the name of that book. Bad women want to get you to fall into sin with her so that you can, she can be, she can manipulate, right? She can manipulate. I don't, he says she has a past with men too. The fact that she has a past with men and she's reading a book called Pussy Power, I, I'm not so sure about this girl, but everybody deserves a second chance. Maybe, she, maybe she's good, but you got to understand and you got to work with her on what's going on here right now. It's okay not to be dating multiple men. It says promotes dating multiple men. No, no, that's not okay. It's good to have multiple men and, and women that you're considering, right? And not, not formally considering but friends, right? I say that men and women aren't, shouldn't be friends. Well, in our day and age, because things are so disordered, it's better that you're not. But you, keep, you can have friends, but you keep them at a distance, right? And you're honest with each other. And you have charity towards one another, meaning that you're not going to fall into sin with one another. You're, you're, you're trying to help that person not go to hell. They say that marriage is really about helping the other person get to heaven. That's what a Christian marriage is. Christian marriage is two people helping each other get to heaven. But if you start now doing things that's going to get that other person to go to hell, eh, 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 eh. it's all disordered. It's all disordered. So let me back up for a moment. She has you as a, at a distance. That's fine. She might have other men at a distance too. That's fine. Until you formally pronounce to her father... And, you know, through her, too, because this world, that's the way it is. But you let her know, let her know uh, you know, and you work with her father. I, we got to listen. Fathers won't get the respect that they that they should have if we don't even give it to them. Right. I didn't respect my wife's father. 
I didn't. But now as a father, I think I'm like, you know, if I would have afforded the man the honor that was due to him, even though he didn't know that that was due to him. Most fathers don't even know that that respect is due to him. They don't know that the, that honor is due to him. I didn't know that maybe that would have even elevated his own soul. He would have said, wow, you know what? It is important that a young man come and speak to me, right? Look, listen, I know you guys, a lot of guys are going to listen to this and they're going to roll their eyes and they're going to cringe at the things I'm saying. I'm just describing what has always been, what has been for 2,000 years. We're living in an age of diabolical disorientation. It's only been the past 60 years since feminism has wrought this dis Destructive, destructive dating pattern that we have right now. This is all new, by the way. That's why it sucks. That's why relationships suck. That's why marriages suck. That's why family sucks. It sucks. Why? Because no order, right? So you can keep living in a disordered way and you're just going to keep getting what disordered people get, which is trash. I'm just, listen, I don't know how this is going to work, how it's going to happen, but I'm describing what order looks like. That's all I'm doing, guys. And order only... Listen, there's two ways that order, order is unfolded. One, we choose order. Two, order is slammed down on us, right? God gives us a choice. He says, look, I teach you order. You can choose order. But if you don't choose order, you're going to get destroyed. Look at what happened during the flood, right? Just look, at, just look at our society. It's destroyed. We are being, we, this is the chastisement. Right? We think the chastisement is going to be like, you know, and it may be at some point, like raining fire and stuff. No. We're being chastised by having horrible relationships. Y'all can't find good women. That's a chastisement. That's a punishment for going along with feminism for the past 60, 70, 80 years. We're being punished right now. Children are being raised without fathers in single mother homes. Probably half of you. That's a punishment. Not you specifically, but our culture. We're being punished. When there's no fathers, that's a punishment. When there's no order, that's a punishment. We're being chastised as we speak. Only thing is, most people don't even know what it should look like. So I have to say it. So, let me see. Where are you? Last weekend, she rejected me and I admitted I acted in a slightly awkward way. Right, right. Well, you only act in an awkward way if you think that somebody owes you something. The only reason why we get awkward or we get jealous or we get upset with women is because we think that she owes us something. And, the only, and the, for the most part, we think women owe us something because sex, right? Right? We become, even if it's a woman that you haven't had sex with, because of your wanting, because of your needing, because of your lusting over her, there's this drooling right and through that there's a jealousy right we're watching lord of the rings right now right me and my kids we don't watch, we just started watching movies it's a beautiful thing and we're all watching movies that are like catholic movies lord of the rings catholic right did you know that uh, the guy that made it was catholic and Gollum, right smeagol smeagol and everybody who wants that ring but smeagol in particular he don't have the ring right now right frodo has the ring and every time he sees that ring, he's like, I wants it. Me, we wants it. My precious, we wants it. And he turns, he just freaks out. He can't help himself because he, the fact that he doesn't have it, but he desires it, turns him into a freak. My precious, we needs it. He says it too. Yes, I turned into Gollum. <laughs> we turn into a Gollum. We needs it. Right, And when, when you needs it like that, like Gollum needs the ring, you do all kinds of dumb things, all kinds of diabolical things. Let her follow the rules in that book. But I tell you what, you follow the rules in another book. There's a great book I have here, and I'll give you lots of books that you can read from so that you can understand what is required. Read The Patriarchy. Read this book. Read the case for patriarchy. Read hard, men, hard, uh, hard times treat strong men. Right? Read the case for patriarchy. Read biblical masculinity. 
Read The Terror of Demons. Terror of Demons is, uh, is the book that Kennedy Hall wrote, right? Is that right here? You read this book. This book is where I got the term weaponized chastity. We need to weaponize chastity. Let her read her pussy power book. You read patriarchy books so that you can watch her and you can respect her from afar. Meaning, when I say respect her, meaning like you do you. You do you. And that's righteous for you to keep man at a distance and not to be riding a cock carousel. I see that. But at the same time, I'm a patriarch and I maintain my frame. And if I'm going to move forward with anything as associated with you, I'm going to do it through order. Don't deal with disordered women. Don't deal with women in a disordered way. This is why we got what we got. Sorry, right? This is what our parents and our grandparents gave us to work with. It's your generation. It's your generation that's gonna, that all this is going to come crashing down on and Hard times create strong men. That's you guys. That's you. Me, I'm a little bit older, so I'll, I'll be an elder at that point. But all you guys in your 20s and whatnot, hard times create strong men is about you. You're going to face the hard times. These are the hard times. Like I said, this is a chastisement. What does that mean? Strong men must rise. This is why there's such a movement towards traditional masculinity right now, right? Reclaiming traditional masculinity. That's why there's a movement towards uh, traditional masculinity because it's your generation that is bearing the brunt of the weak men that were created before, right? The good, the, good, the good times that created the weak men, the effeminate men. My generation or, or my father's generation, and I don't blame my father because my father wasn't American, but that generation, the boomers, right? It all started going downhill with the boomers, and now you guys have to pay the price. I even heard, and I've heard this multiple times from multiple people that I hold in high regard that it will be your generation. They said, to, they said this to me, right? Because they were talking about people of, that have children, young children like I do. Prepare your children for martyrdom. Prepare your, when I heard that, I got chills. I even told my children that today. I said, I heard from someone that I respect highly that I need to prepare you guys for martyrdom. Hard times create strong men. So if everything I sound, say sounds like fairy tale, understand it will come. To, it will come full circle. It will be this way again. Hopefully, I'm just giving you guys a leg up on it so that you can deal with it in an ordered way in this disordered world. So let me see. Right now, my head is all over the place, and I have to keep myself grounded. I like this girl, and I don't want to waste time. I'm also, it's also pretty rare that I find somebody I align with. If you think that she, first of all, if you don't think she's worth marrying or not even worth marrying, right? Because sometimes guys think a woman is worth marrying, but she's not a wife. She's not a wife. If you think that she's wife potential, let me put it that way. I got to start saying that instead of, you know, if she's worth marrying. Marriage is not the thing. Can she be a wife, a good wife, a traditional wife, a submissive wife? If you think that she has that in her and you've spoken with her about that, you got to ask her, what do you bring to the table and what do you think about being a, a, a submissive wife, right? You ask her these things. And if she cringes and runs away, and you be like, okay, she's not ready. But if she checks off all the boxes for what would be a good wife, and we've spoken about this here before, it's very simple things. It's very simple things, right? Like, does she clean, right? A lot of these women are nasty. You go to their house and there's dishes. If you go to her house and there's dishes in the sink, eh, eh, eh. And, and you don't, you don't want to have to convince a woman not to be nasty. You don't want to have to convince a woman that she needs to cook and clean. You want a woman that's already a wife. What do you want from your wife? It's not, it's not subjective. That's an objective thing. A good wife or a good husband or an, is an objective thing, right? You don't say beauty is an ivy beholder. It doesn't work that way with husband and wife. There's objective needs that should be met for a woman and for a man to be a husband and a wife. So if you think she fits that, then proceed with formal courtship. 
Tell her. I'm considering you for marriage. What are your thoughts on that? Right? Like, that's probably the way you have to do. He says, I don't know yet. Then you're wasting your time. Then just forget her. Forget her completely. And I know she's she probably I know that you don't know. And I have a good feeling that she's not worth it. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are we doing with women that we don't plan to make our wives? Woman was created for man. Why? As a helpmate, right? This is a beautiful book that I'm reading so that I can share with my daughters. And it, it is written by young women, biblically minded women, Christian women. It says, God created the woman so that she could be able to come to the aid of a man and be his help and support. That is the purpose of a woman. God made her for what? To come to your aid and be supportive in times of help. Now she does go on, right? For those who are watching this and they're like, oh, misogyny. The word helper doesn't imply inferiority on the part of the woman. It actually implies a need for help on the part of a man and a special kind of ability on the part of a woman, right? This is the philosophy to live by when dealing with women. We have to go back to a biblical understanding of our gender roles. If she's not a helper, she's not a wife. She's not even a woman. A woman that doesn't recognize her role as a helper is deluded because she is helping somebody, but just not you, right? She's helping her boss, right? These, career, these feminist career women, right? They may not submit to you and help you even though you're her husband, she will help her boss, though, and think not twice about it. Even these women who forged the feminist movement, they didn't do it on their own. Did you know that feminism only came about because these women were the, on the puppet strings of powerful men who knew that if they got these feminists to push this agenda, that it would create the havoc and the mess that it, we're in right now? Feminist women have no power. They have no power. They're helpers to the Marxist puppet masters. They're deluding themselves and they're going to be miserable until they figure that out. I don't want to condemn every woman who doesn't know this yet to a horrible life. But if you take a look at women that don't know this while they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and get older, these are miserable women because they have nobody to help. Why are these old feminists so miserable? Because they're not filling their role. My wife is perhaps the most happy woman on the face of the earth. <laughs> I don't think there's too many women that are more happy than my wife. Just to be completely honest. What does my wife do day in and day out? She's a helper. She helps me. She helps our children. She helps keep our home. She is delighted. There will be women that will say, oh, but I want a career. Well, guess what? You're a disordered helper. You're helping all right. You're just helping something that is lesser, right? Working for your Fortune 500 CEO is lesser than the God-given gift to give birth and raise children and to serve a man that loves you with all his heart. I give all I have to my wife because she's my helper. So if this woman is not a helper, She's not a wife. So I think I could just sort of end it with you there, right? You're all caught up in her because you're being Gollum and she got that ring and you want your precious. But she's, she's, she's got a past. She's trying to change her ways, but she's doing it by reading books that are obviously feminist-minded. And she's, she's using her puss power against you. This is, a, this is the opposite of weaponized chastity. It is the man now that needs to have cock power by saying, no, I don't need your pussy. I don't want your pussy. I want a wife. Every woman has a pussy. Only a select few women are wives. I'll leave you with that, dude. I'm done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, 
and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.